CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Ham Radio operators are meter readers. They read play current meters, grid current meters, screen current meters, SWR meters, um, field strength meters, watt meters. Speaking of watt meters, the most popular watt meter ever, and the one that does, and the one that is the standard of the industry, is the Bird 43, and that's what those are. The Bird 43 has been around since the 1950s, and really hasn't changed much. Well, the price has changed a lot. They're pretty expensive these days. Um, but they really are the standard of the industry. If uh, the FCC visits a, a facility, the guys likely are going to be carrying a Bird 43. Bird 43s um, have an interesting design. It's interesting because it's so simple. Basically, in the metal case, there's nothing. Um, there's a 0 to 50 microamp meter. It's a rugged meter. And the other thing that's in there is a metal coaxial cable with a hole in the side of it. That hole accepts uh, slugs or elements, and elements come in a series of, of values. Um, for example, um, uh, out of my case of elements, uh, this one is about my glasses, um, 0 to 2500 watts. Uh, 2 to 30 megahertz. This is handy for um, a couple of reasons in that it, the, the upper end of the scale is 2,500, but mid-scale where you're going to be doing most of the reading is in the range of um, 1,000, 1,500 watts. So it's very accurate at that point. Um, give an example what else I have. This is uh, 200 to 500 megahertz at 50 watts. Good for a, a 440 transceiver. Um, here's a uh, 2 to 30 megahertz uh, slug that uh, is 50 watts. Um, there's a blank in here. So if you don't have a slug, you can plug the hole with one of these guys. Um, the, uh, the two that are in the, uh, in the two birds that are sitting on the table are 250 watts. So uh, mid-scale is roughly 100 watts, which is what we're going to put through it. And they are uh, 2 to 30 megahertz. The uh, Bird 43 is highly accurate and repeatable. Uh, whether you plug in a new slug, an old slug, as long as it hasn't been damaged, it's probably going to read the same. And from one meter to the other, it's going to read the same. And to show that, I'm going to do a few tests. And then we're going to do um, some tests where it isn't highly accurate and talk about why that is. So I've got a transceiver set up coax cable uh, through the two watt meters through another watt meter that's sitting on top that's not pictured and into a uh, the fin thing is a bird demi load. The bird demi load is good for 500 watts uh, for like a half an hour. So um, I get a camera going and we'll put 100 watts into it and see what happens. Okay, we've got the two birds set up. I've got a transceiver ready to go. Uh, up on top is an N8LP, uh, LP100A, uh, also a highly accurate peak reading watt meter. Um, and we're going to see what these three watt meters show um, when I key this transceiver. Well, they're going to show the same, and if so, how much. So uh, keying it, uh, the LP100 says 104 watts. The two birds also showing it about 104 watts. So uh, there's a max power on the Yesu FT450 getting 104 watts and likely that's that's exactly what's going out. Now what happens when you switch to SSB? The rule of thumb that we used to use was uh, when I was a kid, uh, double the meter reading um, when you're talking on SSB and that'll show you what the full scale meter reading is. So let's test that. Um, this bird has a peak reading uh, device in it. This is a peak reading watt meter. This one does not have it. So this will be the one that we're going to look at. I'll try to get it out of the way here. Um, what, uh, what will that one show? 
um, since it's not a peak reading watt meter. In other words, if I'm running a 100 watts single sideband, what will that meter show since it's not a peak reading watt meter? And that's the case in most linear amplifiers and other devices. The play current meter, grid current meter, screen current meter, and other things, they're not peak reading. They're just, they're just reading, um, I don't want to say average because that's not the case. So I'm going to change modes on this transceiver. The um, uh, SSB position and if you'll notice occasionally I've got 115 watts output on the um, LP100. No, make note of that because that's one of the reasons for doing this video is key down it did 100 watts or 104 watts but its peak output is going to be higher. So when you tune up an amplifier or an antenna tuner, um, you may find that your output is higher. There's 115, 121 watts. 100 watt transceiver puts out 121 watts. Now, I'm going to put that meter uh, into the peak reading position. Now, the bird is showing um, about, yeah, about the same, about 115 watts on peaks. So it matches the LP100, both peak reading meters, this one with a, a transistorized device in it, I, it, is reading pretty much in line with the LP100. Now over here is the bird watt meter, and I've got the mic gain set to max. It's all the way up, um, which you shouldn't do, but we're doing this as a test, and I'm into a dummy. Uh, it is showing uh, about 25 watts. So if I double that, the uh, power out is 50 watts, and that would be the old way of calculating. But it's not. It's more than four times that. In fact, on average, it runs about five times what the meter indicates if it's not an amplified peak reading meter. Why is that important? Well, let's say you have a linear amplifier and you tune it for um, 400 watts. Let's pick a number. Um, let's say 200 mils of play current, you may actually be peaking an amp at times, not the whole time, but some of the time, causing a lot of distortion. Uh, case in point, a neighbor uh, bought two tubes for his linear amplifier, put them in, and they w went flat after a couple of weeks, a uh, month of operation. Um, so we got two more from the manufacturer, and they went flat after a couple of weeks. If you've seen some of my videos on tuning up an amplifier, I rec recommend turn, tuning, turning the load control um, and advancing it beyond where the peak output occurs. And that's because there's 115 watts. That's because your peak output is going to exceed what you can put during just a carrier. Now to show that again, I've got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 115 watts, 120, uh, there's a, okay, 114. Let's put the um, transceiver back in carrier position, key it, CMA watts. They're all showing 104 watts or 105 watts. So again, key down 104 watts, it's actually putting out about 10% more and sometimes 20% more. So if you're tuning up an amplifier and you're exceeding by 20%, grid current, play current, screen current, tubes are going to be ruined in short order. Along with that, um, you're going to be splattering, or the, the transceiver will be splattering because the amplifier is tuned up at one point, and it also could be an older style uh, transmitter where you literally tune it up. What's the message here? Well, first of all, um, a meter that's not amplified or has some circuit in it to make it re-peaks it's probably going to show 20 to 25%, maybe 10% of what the peak reading really is because it just can't move fast enough. Digital meters are another story. There's no inertia. They, they go right up. It's all, you know, it's got an amplifier in it. Uh, this is a highly accurate meter. And as you can see, when I keyed it, it showed 104 or 5 watts, and so did the birds. Oh, if you recently got new tubes for your amplifier and you flatten the other ones in, in a few months time it's probably not the tubes it's probably the way you tuned it up if your friends and neighbors are telling your signals broad 
It again may be that uh, when you look at the ALC meter, which is how you set the mic gain, is with the ALC meter. Um, if you set the mic gain so that the ALC meter is full scale, I guarantee you it's going way past that and you are going to be splattering. Which is one of the reasons why I recommend keeping the ALC meter to about one-third scale. And that's what a lot of the instruction books uh, also recommend. I hope you found that interesting. If you have a comment or if you have an idea about uh, how this test should have been done or a suggestion or a question, uh, put it below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm really happy with the number of, su of subscribers. We're approaching 16,000, which is just terrific. I'm Jim, W6LG for Hammerdeal Basics. Thanks for watching. See you the next time.